Well hello again everyone, I hope you are all keeping well. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video today because I've come across a piece of software which links in with Photoshop's new generative uh, fill AI features. Uh, and if you haven't heard of generative AI then you've probably been sitting under a rock for the past God knows how many months. Um, generative AI, for those of you that don't know, uh, is an AI fill tool that basically can fill in, uh, remove objects from your images. It can create objects itself as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll run through a little bit of what it can do as, as a standalone feature. But what I wanted to do on this video was show you how I've been using it recently to remove my tripod from the 360 photos that I take. Uh, many of you may know that for a while I've been using Affinity Photo uh, for this and it works brilliantly. It's very, very good. It's got a fantastic 360 workflow. Uh, however, it's not the most accurate. Uh, so with this new generative fill feature, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And the way that I use it is using a plugin from a company called Flaming Pair called Flexify 2 and it's brilliant. I've, I can't believe I've never come across this before. That's pretty my fault for not researching it enough. But, um, but with the new generative feature, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. So what we're gonna do is have a look at how, how it all works. Uh, I'll run through how you can get the Photoshop beta version as well. And, and then we'll look at the Flaming Pair so uh, Flexify 2 software and how we can use that to easily remove the tripods using the generative AI. Uh, I will also show you some actions as well because there are quite a few steps to take and it can be quite time consuming. So creating an action is gonna be your best friend and it is very, very quick once you do so. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, what I wanted to show you first of all is how to get Photoshop Beta if you haven't actually got it yet. So it's very, very straightforward. All you do is just navigate to your Creative Cloud desktop, uh, click on apps at the top, and then navigate to beta apps in the left-hand menu, and then you'll see Photoshop Beta listed there. So you just literally just download that, um, and then that's it, job done. So the other thing that you're gonna need is the Flaming Pair Flexify 2 software. So that's available. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Uh, they do do, I believe, a, yeah, they do, do do a free trial of it. And to purchase, I believe it's about 40 pounds. Yeah, 43 pounds to purchase. So uh, it is worth every single penny. And you are about to see why. So uh, I picked a couple of images um, that I thought would be good examples. So what I'll do is I'll just click on open and then I've got the first image here. So double click on that. And I chose this one. So I normally find that removing a tripod from sort of block paving like this, uh, it doesn't normally work 100% using Affinity Photo. So I, that I have to then do sort of clone stamp tooling and all that sort of stuff. So. As I mentioned earlier on, there are a few stages involved with this. So it is definitely, definitely worth creating an action. And I'll go through that. I've got an action up here, uh, but I'll go through how to do that shortly for you. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to come onto layer and then duplicate layer. Uh, you can just keep this as background copy or you can name it wherever you like. And click on OK. And then we go to filter. Um, Flaming Pair Flexify 2. So there are instructions on the website on how to install uh, the plugin on Photoshop. So if you follow those, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, so just click on Flexify 2, and then it comes up with this here. So uh, I haven't gone through any of the other settings for Flexify 2 yet. Um, I, might, I might have a play around with it, but in order to do the tripod removal, what you need to do is just focus on this input and output section here. So uh, we change the input to Ecu Rectangular. So I'll just use the E key just to navigate because there's so many different types you can choose from here. Um, so let's just go with Ecu Rectangular there. And then we want the output to be Zenith and Nadir. Like so. so you can see in the preview panel here, we've got our Zenith shot and we've got the Nadir shot. So uh, I'm going to click on OK and it's going to create that view in our duplicated layer for us. 
There we go. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do is click on the, uh, you can either use the lasso tool or the rectangular marquee tool. I'll just use the marquee tool and we just draw around the tripod like so. Uh, you need to make sure that you keep some space um, around your subject here. Okay, so uh, once we've done that, we click on generative fill and then click generate. So that will do its thing. Uh, it doesn't take too long. Uh, it, it does really depend uh, on your um, internet connection uh, because this does do it sort of uh, sort of AI sort of online as far as I'm as I believe. And and there we go, gone. Uh, the great thing with this is that it does come up with different options. So this is the first one. That's the second one. I think that looks a bit better to me. And then that's the third one. Um, if you're not happy with any of them, then you literally just click on generate again and it'll generate another three options for you. So I'm gonna go with this one here. That's done a really, really good job. Uh, and then all we do is we come to generative layer on the layers panel here and we just click merge down. All right, so that will now merge that removed tripod image into our uh, duplicated layer. Then we come back up to filter Flaming pair, Flexify 2, because we want to basically get this back into a net rectangular view. So we'll say input, Zenith and Nadir. And then output, net rectangular. And you'll see that we've got just the Zenith and Nadir shown with a transparent background behind it. Click on OK. And it'll do its thing. And there we go. It's gone. All right. So then what we do is come to the duplicated layer here, right click it, click flatten image, and we're done. Okay. Easy as that. So let's try another one. Uh, let's do this one here. So what I want to show you here is how to set up the action to do this whole process uh, pretty much automatically. So uh, what we need to do is come up to the actions panel up here. If you can't see the actions panel, then just come up to window here and then just make sure that actions is ticked and then it will be on there for you. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on next actions and then I'm going to click on the plus symbol and I'm going to say uh, tripod I've already got this action done, so I'm just going to create a different one. Tripod be gone. Um, what you do also need to do, and this is very important, is you need to set a function key for this. My main one I've got here I've set as F12, so I'm going to set this one as F11, uh, which means that when you push that button, it will start the action off for you. Okay, so uh, once we've done that, we click on record. Now, what it will do from now is it will basically record each step that we've taken within this process. So let's go through those. So um, we, the first thing that we did was we duplicated the layer. So we'll do that. And then the next step was to open up the Flexify 2 plugin. And then we need to change the input to extra rectangular. And then the output to Zenith and the deer. Oh, where's it gone? There. Okay, then we click OK. And you'll see there that it's added Flexify 2 stage into here. Uh, and then what we do is we come up to the rectangular marquee, make sure that's selected. Again, you can use the lasso tool if you wanted to and just draw a shape around it. Um, you do need to bear in mind that your tripod might be in a different position each time. So I would recommend using the marquee tool and just draw sort of an equal square uh, around the tripod like so um, with quite a bit of space around the outside just in case the legs are rotated around. And, and then what we want to do is we want to click on generative fill and click generate. There we go. Now, what's important to do now is to 
come back to your actions and then add a stop, okay? And just say, uh, select image, let's say. Uh, we don't want to click allow continue because what we want this to do is to pause the action. Uh, and the reason we want to do that is because we want to choose which one of these we want to have, okay? Because we might not want the one that it automatically chooses, which I don't want in this case, because it's just a bit messed up here. So if I click on this one here, on there, there we go, that's a bit better. It's a bit of funkiness there, but as I said, you can regenerate it if you want to. It's not a problem at all, um, but we're gonna go with this one here, all right? Um, it will put these generated variants in here, but we can we can delete those at a later date. That's not a problem at all. And so what we want to do now is we want to come to generative layer, click merge down, and then go to filter, flaming pair, flexify two, and then change this back to Zenith and Adir. And then output egg rectangular. Then click on OK. Done. And then we right click background copy, flatten image, and then I do file save. OK. All right. And then we'll do stop. So now we've recorded that action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go back to remember F11 it was, I set it up. So I'm going to close this one down and I'm going to open this one here. And then I'm going to hit F11. and it will do its thing. So it's, it's automatically done the, the Flexify 2 first stage, and it's just creating the generative fill now. And there we go. So we've got stop that's come up. So it's telling me to select the image. So um, this gives me a chance just to choose which one I want. So let's say that one there, and then we come back up to the actions. Um, and we can, we can, let's delete these now actually. Delete this selection. Delete this selection. Right, so now what we want to do is we want to carry this action on. So what we do is we press play and then it will carry it on. So it's gonna merge that layer down and then it's gonna open up Flexify 2 in the background. It doesn't have to show it. And then done, that an image, save. And that's automatically saved it for me as well. Okay, and then we just click close. Job done. Okay, so I think you'll agree that is pretty straightforward and pretty impressive. I think on average it's probably saved me about two minutes, maybe three minutes per photo. Uh, not saying that Affinity Photo takes a long time to do, um, but there are always little touch ups that you need to do once you've removed the tripod. Uh, using Affinity. If you haven't seen my Affinity uh, tripod removal video, then I'll, uh, I'll pop a link to it in the corner for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I think that's covered everything we need to know. Well, I hope you all found that informative and useful. Uh, I, for one, am going to be using this plugin and this feature uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, one thing I will mention, and I have heard this um, elsewhere, is that you're not able to use um, generative fill AI for commercial purposes. I'm assuming that that's just whilst it's in the beta phase. Uh, so once it's pushed out into the mainstream program, I'm sure that will all be fine. So, uh, so do be wary of that. And also you may have noticed that I have added a little thanks button underneath all of my videos. Uh, I do work very, very hard to put these YouTube videos out on top of me sort of running my, my normal day-to-day -day 360 business. Um, so if you do fancy buying me a coffee or donating any money, then it would be 
greatly appreciated. Uh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, because due to the stats, I've looked at the stats and there's a lot of people who view my videos that aren't subscribed, then please do. Uh, also smash that like button. Uh, I have actually added something new recently. So if you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that uh, I've got a new edition up there, which I will be reviewing soon, and that is the Insta360 Link webcam. And uh, spoiler alert, it's amazing. So, um, so yeah, once that video is live, uh, if you're subscribed, you'll be notified. And um, if, uh, if you're watching this after it's been created, that video, I'll pop a link in the corner for you so you can have a look at that. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for your time, and I will speak to you all again soon. Take care.